Welcome to our quick overview of the 1960 classic Spartacus. Directed by Stanley Kubrick, the film follows the story of a rebellious slave leading a revolt against the Roman Empire. But there's more to this epic than meets the eye. Throughout the production and beyond, the movie is filled with funny, shocking, and sad facts that add depth to its legacy. So keep watching to discover them all. What makes Spartacus a lasting symbol of the industry? Are there any lesser known facts or anecdotes about the movie that fascinate you? Share your thoughts and memories in the comments below. So sit back, relax, and let's delve into the world of this iconic film. Get ready for a journey filled with laughter, surprises, and heart-wrenching moments. What's your most memorable experience related to this classic? Share your stories with us below. In the realm of classic movies, there's one that really stands out. Spartacus, released in the 1960s, is a film that still grabs attention today. Imagine a story set in ancient Rome, where a slave rises up against the empire. It's a tale of rebellion, bravery, and the fight for freedom. Directed by Stanley Kubrick and starring Kirk Douglas, the movie is more than just a film. It's a significant part of culture, showing the struggles of its time. Released during a time of change and unrest, Spartacus struck a chord with people everywhere, touching on themes of oppression and freedom. But beyond its historical importance, the movie is a cinematic achievement. With its stunning visuals, strong acting, and moving music, it transports viewers to ancient Rome, immersing them in a world of gladiators, politics, and big battles. As the main character fights for freedom, his journey becomes a symbol of hope for all who want to break free from tyranny. His bravery inspires others to join him, challenging the system and demanding justice for the oppressed. In the history of movies, Spartacus is proof of the power of storytelling and the lasting influence of one of cinema's greatest adventures. Its message has reached across generations, still touching people worldwide. In the film, the slave revolt kicks off at the gladiator training school sparked by him. It seems like a sudden event coming from a riot he and his fellow gladiators caused. However, some historians suggest he actually planned the revolt several days beforehand. He, along with around 70 gladiators, started the riot in the kitchen area after their plan was in danger of being discovered. Stanley Kubrick, a cinematographer with a specific vision, eventually took over the direction from Russell Meddy, who was initially hired for the job by Anthony Mann. Kubrick was precise in what he wanted, telling Meddy to do nothing and allowing him to take charge of all the work. The movie has earned recognition from the Library of Congress for its cultural, historical, and aesthetic significance being selected for the National Film Registry. It stands as a sign of the story's portrayal on screen. Howard Fast, originally hired to adapt his novel into a screenplay, faced challenges with the format. Despite this, the film went on to achieve recognition. It won Best Picture Drama at the Golden Globes, but did not secure a nomination for Best Picture at the Academy Awards, a distinction shared by only two other films. Dalton Trumbo and Stanley Kubrick had disagreements over the screenplay. Trumbo, blacklisted for his left-wing sympathies, couldn't be on set, allowing Kubrick to make changes without much opposition. Trumbo, however, found ways to influence the film, including attending screenings under a blanket to provide feedback on early versions. These insights helped shape the final version, which was well received. The movie Spartacus, included in the American Film Institute's list of 400 nominees for the top 100 greatest American movies, features actress Joanna Barnes as the last surviving credited cast member following Kirk Douglas's passing in February 2020. During filming, director Stanley Kubrick clashed with openly communist screenwriter Dalton Trumbo over differing visions. Kubrick criticized the character's lack of depth, feeling Spartacus was too generic and interchangeable with other slave gladiators. As a result, Kubrick distanced himself from the movie. The movie Spartacus from 1960 is closely tied to 1950s American history, especially the House Committee on Un-American Activities hearings and the Civil Rights Movement. The hearings, similar to the scene where the slaves refused to identify Spartacus, reflect real-life events where people were pressured to accuse others. Howard Fast, who wrote the source material, wrote the novel while he was in prison for refusing to testify. The early scenes with Draba and Spartacus highlight the history of slavery in America, with Draba's sacrifice showing the debt owed to black slaves. The integration in the gladiator school and Spartacus's diverse army mirror the fight against segregation and for African-American equality. Paul Fries provided the voice for several scenes. 
The film received in a certificate from the British Board of Film Censors just before the London premiere, attended by Princess Margaret. Despite initially closing after 35 weeks, public demand led to its revival for another three weeks. Rank later transitioned to a general release in 1962. In casting, Kirk Douglas initially doubted Jean Simmons for the role of Verinia due to her English nationality. He preferred German actress Sabine Bethman, but Stanley Kubrick disagreed, citing Bethman's perceived lack of emotional depth. After a direct confrontation with Kubrick, Douglas opted for Simmons as Verinia as he found no other German actresses suitable. The soundtrack album for the film, while less than 45 minutes long, does not fully represent the score. Plans were made to re-record significant portions with composer Jerry Goldsmith, a friend of Alex North. However, the project faced continual delays and was never realized. Bootleg recordings of the score exist but suffer from poor sound quality. Despite these challenges, the film became the highest grossing us release of its year, cementing its place in cinematic history. Its impact endures, resonating with audiences even today. In the film Spartacus, screenwriter Dalton Trumbo originally proposed Orson Welles for the role of the pirate Tigranes Levantus, which was eventually portrayed by Herbert Lom. Tony Curtis' character, Antoninus, was not part of the original Howard Fast novel, but was created specifically for the movie. Initially, the studio hesitated to credit Dalton Trumbo due to his communist background, but Stanley Kubrick offered to take the credit. However, Kirk Douglas intervened to ensure Trumbo received proper recognition, marking a significant moment in Hollywood history by ending the Blacklist era. Trumbo had previously been credited for writing Exodus, released shortly after Spartacus. Despite differing accounts of the event, Trumbo's contribution to Spartacus remains undisputed, marking a pivotal moment in Hollywood's fight against political censorship. In 1962, the movie Spartacus, directed by Stanley Kubrick, emerged as the highest grossing film in the United States and Canada. Set in 73 BC, the movie was filmed using the 35mm Super 70 Technorama format, a departure from Kubrick's usual preference for standard spherical format. This choice allowed him to capture detailed, panoramic scenes with unprecedented clarity. Notably, one scene featured 8,000 Roman soldiers, portrayed by active duty soldiers from the Spanish army. These soldiers added authenticity to the film's grandeur, creating a visually striking portrayal of ancient Rome. Spartacus' success solidified its place in cinematic history, showcasing Kubrick's versatility as a director and the enduring appeal of historical epics. Sir Peter Ustinov humorously remarked about his daughter, born during production, that she would be in kindergarten by the film's end. She would jestingly say her father worked on Spartacus. Charles Lawton and Peter Ustinov, who portrayed Gracchus and Basiatus respectively, previously played Roman Emperor Nero in other films. It's notable that unlike many epics of its time, Spartacus avoids religious themes.